Amen. Because I am a living witness that he will answer prayer. Amen. 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 It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. We're glad to be back. Amen. We went and uh, spoke at, at my pastor's anniversary. Uh, He's been there 34 years. Amen. 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 To be in a church for 34 years pastoring, yeah. I, I bet he got some stories to tell. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But we're glad to be back. And we're glad to see the mayor, uh, 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 Mary Lack Morell here. Amen. Amen. Uh, come on, y'all give God a good hand of praise. Amen. We want, we want to keep this young man lifted up in prayer. Amen. Uh, you see, I don't know if y'all have ever worked with corporate folks and, and government folks, but them some special kind of folks. Amen. Amen. And they will push you to your furthest limit. Until you, when you really got to call on Jesus. Amen. 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 Because then if you don't call on Je Jesus, you're going to be wanting to do two knuckle sandwiches on some of them folks. Amen. 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 I know what I'm talking about, y'all. Amen. Amen. But we're asking God to continue to lift him and his family up. Amen. That they can go forth to do the Lord's will. Amen. And for, the, for the, that young family, Kyron and his wife, we're praying for y'all. Uh, as y'all raised them two little ones. Amen. Let, let, me, let me give you a word of advice. Parenting does not end because they left your home at 18. Amen. Uh -uh. If you ask me, that's when it just begins. Amen. Amen. I, I was on my phone talking to my son yesterday. My son, 39 years old. And I said, and you bet not go over there. I remember my mama saying something like that to me one time. Amen. But parenting does, does not end when they leave your home. To me, it just begins. What you're doing now before they leave home is practice. Amen. That's, that's all it is, is practice. But God will be with you. If you go with me to Ephesians, the third chapter, and we're going to start at verse 1. And we're always thankful to my wife who continually stand at my side. Amen. Amen. Keep her in prayer. It's good to see Deacon James Morgan. Amen. Amen. I, you know, I, I told him, I said, I was coming over to the house to pull you out. And we didn't see you soon. But he is truly missed when he is not here. Amen. 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 You, you do not know the work that this man has done for this church and what he has sacrificed. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3, starting at verse 1. When you have it, say amen. Amen. And the word of God says, And for this reason I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you. How the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written brief, briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, verse 5, which was not made known to the sons of men in the generation as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and the prophet by the Spirit. Last verse, verse 6. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, first of all, we say thank you. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy that continually shines upon us. Lord, we thank you that you've given us one more opportunity to preach your word. Now, Father God, I ask that you hide me behind your cross and in my stead, leave your sweet Holy Spirit. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, my God, my Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. And Lord, if someone may ask, what must I do to be saved? These words can be a light into their pathway where they can find a waiting door, go in and sup with you. Lord, we forever give you the praise, glory, and honor. In the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. All right, all right. The, the title for this sermon is Can an Intelligent Person Accept a Mystery? But I'm going to shorten that up real easy here. And I'm going to say, we're going to call it, You Ain't So Smart. You ain't so smart. There are many unsolved mysteries that have occurred over time. They include historical events, crimes of ancient artifacts, mysteries like who was Jack the Ripper, where is Amelia Earhart, where is the lost city of Atlantis, and who was the Zodiac Killer. All these mysteries are known to man, but have never been solved. Many ponder on the concept of, are these real or fake? Ask the question, is Frankenstein real? Was the Loch Ness Monster real? Do we have to worry about Dracula? Is he real? But there's a mystery that still for many has not been resolved today. Many today, even Christian and non-Christian alike, still have trouble grasping and understanding of the mysteries that is in associated with God. What could baffle so many and still be the, on the bestseller list for, for, for years? Speeches, conferences, empirical studies alike have put much time and resource into identifying, proving, and coming to a conclusion of this great mystery. What could be so baffling that it stops people in their track? It simply put, it is the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, that makes some wonder, are they intelligent enough to handle a mystery? But you're not so smart. All right, all right. You're not so smart. I would preface this by getting you to understand that your level of intelligence is not good enough to understand an almighty God totally. It does not matter where you got your degree from. It does not matter uh, what job you hold. It does not matter what you think is right or wrong. Because when it comes to God and his son Jesus Christ, there are some things that you may not be able to handle right now. There are people that study the Bible that don't even believe in the Bible. There are people that study the Bible, memorize verses, but won't live according to God's word. There are people that study the Bible, and hard as they try, some things still don't make sense. We have to understand that even in this time that we talk right now, we're still learning more and more about God. Picture for a moment Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Locked down and shackled. Yeah, yeah. Paul saying that I, I'm a slave to Christ now and not to the world. All right. All right. Everybody know Paul's history. Everybody know where he come from. He, he was the elite of the elite. Yeah. I mean, he was, he was raised to be a Jew of the Jew. Yeah. And the best of them. He was taught by Gamaliel himself. Went to the Harvard University of Jewish schools. But when it came to understanding who God was, at the time when he call, was called Saul, he couldn't understand that carpenter's son. He could not understand who Jesus was. So one thing I want you to do is start at point number one and try to figure out how intelligent are you? How intelligent are you? There used to be an old saying that that person's so smart they stupid. They dumber than a box of rocks and don't even know it. 
All this was uh, equated to a person's understanding of what their knowledge would allow them to understand. The average IQ for anyone living with a normal understanding of their rational cognitive skills and their ability to solve a problem is anywhere between 60, I mean, forgive me, between 80 and, and, and 120. Yeah. Now, if you had 80, you, 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 you doing good. You got the basic understanding of some things. But the higher you climb, your intelligence is supposed to climb. But some people can, ha can be so smart that the simplest things baffle them. They can be so smart in physics. They can be so smart in biology. They can be so smart in, in looking at the stars. They can be so smart of going down into the sea and, and figuring out what's that new animal they never found before. But when it comes to Jesus, their intellect does not help them. Right, right. Their the, the mind is not able to grasp this thing called Jesus. Right. We got these new cars now, y'all. They do everything you want yeah, yeah. them to do. They even got, got them now. They're so smart that they'll drive you up and down the highway at 65, 70 mile an hour. I'm the smart one in this group. I want to know how to turn that thing off. I'm not going to let no car drive me no 70 mile an hour down the damn line in Chicago, Illinois. No, you ain't going to carry me like that. Like my mother-in-law said, you carry me too fast. But somebody's smart thought that we needed that. Yeah. Where if we kept it simple like they did in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and early 80s when cars was easy to work on, we could understand that. Yeah. It was easy to pull a fuel pump off. Yeah, easy. You got two boats, pull and slide. All right. It's off. And when you put it back on, you're good if you don't mess up the gasket. You mess up the gasket, then you got to do it all over again. But you just learned something. All right. Now to pull a fuel pump out. Oh yeah, you got to dismantle the whole car. Uh huh. Take take the back seat out. Take 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 the straps out, and then you got to unhook this sensor and unhook that sensor. I got a light that's been on my car for the last 10 years. It's, it's shaped like an engine light, right? It came on. And since that light didn't stop my car, I never messed with that light. I was smart enough to leave it alone. But this newer thing I got over here, when that light came on, it shut the whole car off. Paul is saying that the mystery that was given to him was not given to him by any man's understanding, but that the mystery that he received came from Jesus Christ himself. And he said, and the reason I say this is because I met him on the Damascus Road. First, you have to understand, are you intelligent to know that you met Jesus for yourself? Are you smart enough to say that I know Jesus for myself? It has nothing to do with my mother. It has nothing to do with my father. I know him because I know him to know him. Anytime someone has to ask the question, how do you know if you saved, then they are probably not saved. Amen? All right. Had a person ask me, how do you know you got the Holy Spirit? And this person was a preacher. Yeah. How do you know that God is living in your life? Right. One of the favorite movies I have, and don't judge me, is I love me some Batman. 
My wife loved Batman. We could sit down at night, watch Batman cartoons all night long. Don't judge us. It's better than watching that other stuff they got on TV. Uh -huh. But there was one Batman movie. It was called Batman and Robin. And, and Jim Carrey played the Riddler. And Tommy Lee Jones played Two-Face. They broke into Batman's house and they were finna kill him. And Two-Face was gonna kill him. And Jim Carrey said, uh-uh, don't kill him. Because if you kill him, he won't learn anything. You are on the learning road to heaven. If you understand what life and death means for the believer, then you understand that if you died on this side of the Jordan and rose up on the other side, you understood the mysteries of an almighty God. But can an intelligent person accept that when they close their eyes for the final time on this side and with the hope that they'll open it up at the pearly gates where Jesus is, can they accept that? Christmas time is probably one of the hardest times for some fathers. And they got little ones. And they have to put something together for this child. Like a bike. The bike came with instructions. But proud men don't look at instructions. We don't need instructions. Mm -hmm. We might glimpse over at the box and say, okay, I got that right, got that right. Child walks up to his father and says, what's all those? extra parts the father would say they put those just in case we lost one the mother said why don't you just read the instructions and the husband said I know what I'm doing puts the child on the bike starts that child going down the street Bike ride good for five seconds. Front tire started wobbling. Back tire starts wobbling. And before you know it, the child took an unregistered flight over the handlebars. The father stands there looking ever so puzzled. Then the mother says, if there's one scratch on my child, you're going to take the same trip he took. <laughs> Just because we have an understanding, if we do not read the instructions, we will not gain knowledge. We will not know what to do. 1 Corinthians 2 at verse 12 says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us by God. Paul Starchild said that he's writing on the behalf of the Gentiles to let the Gentiles know that they are now in the body of Christ. Understand that God has imparted his word not from a human perspective, but from a, hu a spiritual perspective. Not by what man has imposed on God, but what God has imposed on man. All right. All right. We have terms like exegesis and eisegesis. Exegesis means to draw out of scripture. Eisegesis mean to put on. The Bible says do not add to or take away. What thus saith the Lord? If you understand thou shalt not, you should not, you bet not. The word natural here stands in total opposition to the word spiritual. It denotes that those who are governed by their desires and those who are governed by the spirit. 
In the New Testament, the, the thing we want most is to get past a natural understanding of who God is and understand him spiritually and understand all of what he is and what he's capable of doing. Right. Point number two. You must have a spiritual intelligence over an earthly intelligence. You must have a spiritual intelligence over an earthly intelligence. I saw something very disturbing on Friday. I saw a man come into a room and mistreat so many people. And they took it. He said he was there to help. But they took it. He made one young woman cry. And she took it. He walked up to me and he said, I want you to tell her something nice about herself. In an arrogant way. I'm already nine sheets to mad because of how he treating people. And I said, I do not care to participate in your process and don't ask me to do anything else. I've always learned ever since I've become, uh, I've understood what's on the inside of me that there's a raging beast that's waiting to get out. And this animal is, is human at best by nature. It's primal, it's fierce, and it's called anger. I got up and walked out to calm myself. Later, this same individual stood in front of thousands and used words and terms that would make the average person mad using words like the N-word and, and, and such things, a, a, a thousand people, and people stood and gave him a round of applause saying he did a such good job. Not just uh, uh, white people, black people too. That's how the truth goes to die. When you applaud something that will take you back 200 years, and say that it's right. I did not applaud him dis disrespecting people in the first session that include black, white, Hispanic, and Indian. I did not applaud to him when he did it again with a much wider group. I had a spiritual understanding that if I have to lose my job because I refuse to applaud this ignorance of this man, then I'm going to lose my job. Because the one thing I know spiritually is that God will take care of me. I may not eat T-bone steak, but I can give me a, a T-bone bologna sandwich. Intelligently, spiritually, we have to understand that things that will lower who we are as people of God is not acceptable. All this stuff that's on Facebook, YouTube, and the rest of it that is not bolstering up God is only tearing down God's people. I've said it before and I'll say it to my dying day. I don't like Tyler Perry movies. Now y'all can love them, like them, do whatever you want with them. But my God is not a joke. And I am not going to laugh with somebody that made my God a joke. I'm not going to do it. Because one day I have to understand that when I stand in front of an almighty God, I got to answer for that. Green Leaf and all the rest of that stuff people are watching. That's not all how God's people act. We ain't walking around in no $700 suits every day. We ain't wearing diamonds on our finger every day. We not walking up into penthouses or little mansions every day. Some of us live down here in the hood. Realize and understand that if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. 
And as people of God, we have to do like Paul did. Not be a slave to the world, but be a slave to Jesus Christ. Realizing that under everything that God has done and he will do, that there one day will be a reckoning for what you do. He did not and will not stand against the word of God once he met Jesus Christ. Paul did not have enough understanding at the time to know who he had just met on the Damascus road. He was still in his earthly mind. And when he asked the question, who are you? Jesus responded, I am that which you kick against. When you meet Christ from yourself, nobody got to tell you. Realize and understand today that the natural person does not, cannot, and will not accept the things of God. When you are not uh, one of God's, you are an enemy to God. Last point, and then I'm going to leave you alone. <clears throat> you must understand who God is. You must understand who God is. There was a man that went into a library one day. He entered in and went to the section where all the books was. A librarian noticed that he was looking around ever so diligently, ever so hard, but she did not disturb him at this time. Finally, after a moment of, of looking for the for the book he was looking for, he saw the lady putting away the book. She was the librarian. He walked up to the lady and he said, could you help me, please? And she said, yes, how can I help you? He said, I'm looking for a book. And the woman said, what book are you looking for? And he said, Facebook. <laughs> Y'all get that when you get home. Sometimes the books that we're reading is not the right book. People will spend hours on Facebook. They will spend all their free time scrolling up and down, looking at the idiocy of things that people are putting on, watching people get dressed and undressed, shaking this and shaking that. And don't nobody care what y'all are eating. You ain't got to put every one of your meals on Facebook. I know what a chicken look like when it's cooked. I know what corn looks like when it's cooked. It looked like the same thing they gave us in 1967. It looked like corn. I know what new clothes look like. We don't need a pay a play by play of your life. But the one thing you have to understand is when you put your information out there, people know more about you than you know about yourself. People know that you don't have no privacy. People know you don't have no boundaries. People know you don't have no standard for yourself. And people know that your behavior is not of God. 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says, For we, for we now see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. In ancient times, they didn't have mirrors like we have today. Mirrors was not made out of glass. Mirrors was made out of a shiny tin that gave a reflection. But to look in this mirror at that time, you would never really, really see your best reflection. Uh -huh. You would not see what you really look like because it would be obscured in some shape, form, or fashion. You ever go into one of them fun houses in, 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 at the carnival? Yeah. 
And then you go into the house of mirrors. And they got the mirrors fashioned so they change shapes as you go into it. It messes folks up. They begin to laugh. Think it's a great joke. Of that's how they see themselves. But there are so many people that come out of the house of mirrors that once the joke is passed, it's no longer funny. Because they still walk out with the same image of themselves that they hope to forget while they were in there. You have to understand that it is God who made us to be beautifully and wonderfully made. It is God said, who said, I, I know the plans I have for your life. But what we would rather do is hear a motivational sermon from a person like Joyce Myers, Joel Osteen, Oprah Winfrey, some movie star. Some folks are even taking information from Beyonce. All these people who are in the same situation as you, born into a world of sin, they could be on a highway to hell. But if they don't meet Jesus Christ for themselves, to know the God that hung the moon in the sky, Hold the sun back with a power. Keep the seas calm and the land still. This God is the God we need to know. This is the God that we need to see fully and personally for ourselves. This is the God that, that met my mother when she came out of her mother's womb. This is the God that helped my daddy come out into a world and work so hard. This is the God that saved my soul. I don't look at him dimly anymore. I don't look at him like I don't know him anymore. I know Jesus Christ for myself. People say, well, you're too hard. And everybody has their opinion. The only opinion that matters is what thus saith the Lord. The only opinion matters is what says the scripture that God gave to Paul and all the prophets. The only opinion that matters is that God said it, I believe it, and it's got to be true. We don't look at things so dark anymore. I don't like driving at night. I'm trying to get home before the street light come on. I don't like not being able to see all around me. I don't like it when, when I'm not able to judge what's happening to me. But one thing I know that if I'm driving at night, that God is right there at my side. He's not a co-pilot. He's the driver of the vehicle. When I took an operation, I wasn't putting my faith in a doctor. I was putting my faith in God that was going to guide the doctor's hand. When I, when, when, when I, I, I had a child that was sick, it was not the, the, the nurses that was taking care of my child I prayed to, but it was God himself that I prayed to. When I was on death door and I, and I was hours away from leaving this side of the Jordan and going to the other side, it was God that told me to make a right and go into the hospital. This was the God that I knew for myself. Do you know Jesus for yourself? Do you know the grace that he's given to you? That is no longer a mystery if you accepted him as your Lord and Savior. It's no longer hid from you that if you follow his will, he'll be there for you till, you, till the days you die. Do you know that if you do what Jesus wants you to do, you'll never be sad, never be hungry, never be broke. 
Can an intelligent person accept the fact that a man was born of a virgin? Walk with us for 33 long years. Can a man accept that he was beaten and bruised for our, our iniquity? Can a man accept that he was hung on an old rugged cross? Can a man accept that as he hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour, he was showing you who he was? Can a man accept when they said, if he be the son of God, let him get himself down? Can a man accept that when Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing? Can a man accept that on the ninth hour, he said, into thy hands I commit my spirit? Can a man accept that on a Friday he gave up a ghost? Can a man accept that they placed him in a barbary tomb? Can a man accept that he stayed there for three long days? Can a man accept that one early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hand? Can a man accept that he sits at the right hand of God waiting to return? Can a man accept that he got all power in his hand? I don't know about you, but I can accept what God has done for me because on a Friday, he opened up my mind. He opened up my heart. And I got to know his son for myself. I can accept that no matter what comes my way, Jesus is going to be at my side. I may get sick again. He's going to be right there. I may get tired. He's going to push me on. I may be ready to give up. But he's going to say go on for a little while longer. I can accept that Jesus is the Son of God. Can you accept the mystery that God is real and His Son is coming back again? You're not so smart if you can't figure this out. You're not so smart if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You're not so smart if you let this day pass you by without getting it right. The one thing I know, I will not want to go to sleep tonight and not know that my salvation is not taken care of. I want that insurance policy signed, sealed, and delivered. Amen. Come on, let's give God a good hand of praise.